So today I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful custard tart. And a perfect custard tart, in my opinion, consists of beautifully cooked fish due to crisp bone and a custard that is just set so it just dissolves on your tongue. That's the way I look at it anyway. So first we're going to make sweet pastry into your fruit crusts or stand mixer for it with a paddle attachment. Combine together 190 grams of plain flour, 55 grams of castor sugar, a pinch of salt. I always like to add salt to sweet or savoury. In my opinion, it really improves the flavour. And 120 grams of unsalted butter at room temperature. Now we're going to process this until it resembles a crumble. This is what you're looking for. Now you're going to crack in one egg in half a teaspoon of vanilla bean paste. Obviously, if you don't like vanilla, you don't need to add it. It is optional. Now we're going to process this all together until it resembles a dough. Done. And this is what you're looking for. Now wrap the dough cling up nice and tightly and place in the fridge to allow it to relax and firm up. Probably take about four to five hours. Right. Whilst the pastry is in the fridge resting, we're going to let you grease our tart ring, or if you prefer, a loose bottom tart tin. Just going to let you grease it with some unsalted butter. Just run around the edge. Make sure it's nice and soft so it coats easily. Then let it coat it with some flour to make sure the pastry never sticks. Then towel sticks it. Voila. As I'm using one of those towel rings without a loose bottom, I've lined my tray with some non-stick parchment paper so the pastry doesn't stick during the baking. Now I'm just going to put this in the fridge to allow the butter to firm up. Now the pastry has been in the fridge for a fair amount of time now. It's nice and relaxed and nice and firm. It's ready to roll out. So like it's just your bench with some flour. Place your dough under the bench. Then like just the top of the pastry with some flour as well, just a little bit. And also just like cool the rolling pin and some flour, just make sure it never sticks to the pastry. And just work it out a bit, just to make it more pliable. You don't want to overwork the dough. Then simply just start rolling it out. Turning the dough constantly to make sure it's rolled out to an even thickness. And you want to roll it out to, until you achieve a quarter of an inch thick. Now the pastry has been rolled out, it's very fragile at this stage. So I wouldn't recommend just lifting it up and placing it on your tar ring, because then it would tear. Best way to do it is just to carefully fold it in half and then fold it off again into quarters. Makes it easier to lift up that way. And just carefully place the pastry into your top ring and unfold it. Now just use your finger to carefully ease it into the corners. You want to be aggressive here because then it will tear. Just help it in there. Just lift the pastry up and help it along. Now to remove the excess, the best way and easiest way to do it in my opinion without actually tearing the dough is to use a roller pin and just carefully roll it across the top of the pastry and that should remove the excess. Now after our pastry cake is done, we're just going to set this to one side for a sec. I'm just going to cut myself two sheets of cling film, one on top of another so that it's double strength. Now place the cling film into your tart case, pressing it down gently into the corners using your fingers. This is how we're going to blind bake the pastry case. But for now, I'm going to put this tart case in the freezer for at least an hour. It really minimizes the chances of the pastry shrinking throughout the baking process. Great. Now the tart case is ready to blind bake. Fill your tart case up with some ceramic bacon beads, pre oven to 180 degrees Celsius fan. If you don't have ceramic bacon beads, alternatively you can use coins, rice, anything basically that's just going to weigh the pastry down to stop it puffing up during the baking process and to make sure it bakes nice and evenly. And you're going to bake this for about 15 minutes until a nice golden brown. Now at this stage we're going to let this cool down slightly to allow the pastry to firm up. In the meantime, I'm going to gently melt some cocoa butter in the microwave. Now we're going to gently remove the bacon beads. As we use cling film, the cling film firms up nicely, so it acts like a nice bag. Now I'm just going to carefully put a thin layer of cocoa butter on the inside and outside of the tart shell. This will improve the visual aspects of the tart slightly, and it will also fill up any pockets. But the main job of the cocoa butter is to create a thin shell around the pastry case itself which will prevent it from going soggy in the long run. I'll place the link in the description if you want to get some. Now this is going to go back in the oven at 200 degrees Celsius fan for an additional 5 to 10 minutes, just to completely finish the pastry off. So to start the filling, we're going to separate 4 egg yolks. But before we start doing the filling, make sure your oven is turned down to 130 degrees Celsius fan. Alright, if you've never separated an egg before, it's actually really straightforward. There's only one thing I recommend you do is never crack an egg on a round surface or on the edge of something. Because if you do that, the shell could easily go inside the egg and bust the egg yolk. And the best way to do it, in my opinion, is just to gently open it up and just let the white run between your fingers and just pass the yolk from hand to hand, nice and gently. 
completely immutable, like, like that. So now I'm just going to repeat that same process for the remaining eggs. So I'll see you on the other side. Now we've got four egg yolks perfectly separated. Now a single one at first. Brilliant. Now for the next step, let's move over to the stove. Come on, follow me. So now in a saucepan, pour in 300 ml of double cream, along with approximately half a teaspoon of vanilla bean paste. And just give it a mix together to evenly dispute those ingredients. Now place the pan on medium low heat, stirring every so often, just stop the scorching on the bottom of the pan. Once you start seeing steam coming off this, take off the heat. So now while waiting for the cream to heat up, to these egg yolks, add in 45 grams of castor sugar. And you're going to whisk it together until it's nice and pale. So now the cream's nice and hot, we're not going to just pour the cream straight into the egg yolks because then the egg yolks will scramble. We're going to temper the egg yolks. So we're going to first add a little bit of cream to the egg mixture whilst whisking. Once you've added that first bit of cream to the egg yolks, be a bit more generous with the cream from now on. Now we're just going to pour the mixture through a strainer for easy use and just to make sure you didn't accidentally scramble any eggs. Now just pour your custom mixture into your tar case. And now before we put this in the oven, finally grate some fresh nutmeg over the top using a microplane. In my opinion, you can't have a custard tart without any fresh nutmeg on top. Alright, now we're going to bake this tart at 130 degrees Celsius pan for about 30 to 40 minutes or until just set. It's best just to keep an eye on it because all ovens tend to be a little bit different. So now this is the consistency the tart should be before you tear out the oven. It should have a slight chill. Now we're going to let this fully cool down at room temperature, then we're going to put it in the fridge for about 1-2 to two hours. So now the tart is ready to cut. The secret to get a nice clean slices is get it nice and hot by dipping it in some boiling water, then wipe it off the excess, then cut the tart. That is what you call a perfectly executed custard tart, my friends. And now to serve, optionally, grate a little bit more fresh nutmeg on top. So in my opinion, there's nothing better than a bit more nutmeg on a custard tart. Delicious. And now that's it. All that needs to be done is to taste. The first thing that comes to my head is, wow, I've cooked this custard perfectly. When it hits your tongue, it just melts. It's incredibly delicious. It's got wonderful flavor. This dessert is incredible. Hope you give this one a go. And that's it. I do hope you enjoyed today's video. If you enjoyed, please go down the bottom there and give this video a big thumbs up. It helps the channel out and it, and it really means a lot to me. And if you fancy it, please click subscribe and also ring the bell to receive notifications. And thanks again for watching. I'll see you later. Take care.